So let's try and code the waiter and cook example using regular synchronous Python. This is what it could look like. So first, I'm going to create a file here. I'm going to call it sync.py. So we're going to simulate the waiter and the cook example. So we're going to have two functions. One is going to be called the waiter. And for now, let's just pass. And then the other one is going to be the cook. OK. So the waiter is going to pass orders to the cook by using the name of the dish that he wants prepared or that the customer order. So we can do like uh, pasta. We can do another one, Caesar salad. And that was is going to be really quick. And finally, lamb chops, which is going to be the slowest one. And we're going to simulate this. These integers are really seconds, but you know, in real life could be minutes. So the cook is going to take a, an order, which is a string and then a time to prepare, which is going to be an integer. And that's for our typing purposes. So we're going to print the order that the cook gets the moment he gets it. So we're going to print getting order. Then we're going to do a sleep function that will take the time to prepare as a parameter. And this will just like freeze or block the cook function for the amount of seconds that it's being passed. And finally, we print when the order is ready. We print the dish name and ready. So as we can see, this doesn't return anything so we can do none here and same thing here this doesn't return anything this is for like our typing check we're going to need the time library so that we can do the wait function here on 10 and finally to execute the python program on the terminal we're going to do name equals main and call the waiter function we're going to then call on our terminal and we're going to do Python 3 if you're in Mac and Python if you're in Windows, sync py. And we should see how each dish is getting prepared. The pasta order takes a little bit of time, 8 seconds. Then the Caesar salad, which should be faster. And finally, the lamb chops, which is going to take a long, long time. And you can think of this as input output operations that are happening in a regular program, i.e. Uh, it's going out to, uh, to hit an external API or your platform is uh, doing some uh, database operation. So this is what this is simulating. But as you can see, it does each call is being done synchronously and it's also being blocking. So it's uh, when it's doing the pasta, it's not doing anything else until it gets the pasta ready, the scissor salad and lamb chops, the same thing. So we're going to now try to do this using a, the async methodology. So let's see how we do that. Make sure you have at least Python 3.7 installed by doing Python 3 dash dash version on the Mac or Python dash dash version on Windows. If you get less than 3.7, go ahead and upgrade using Homebrew on the Mac or Chocolaty on Windows. So now we'll convert this program to use the async.io library and get a feel of how to write this code asynchronously. So let's copy the sync.py file on a new file called chorus.py with the following code. First, we'll need to import the async.io Python standard library so that we can use the asynchronous features. All the way at the bottom, we'll replace the if name equals main conditional and instead use this new run method from the async.io module. So what does run do? Run essentially grabs a low-level async.io pseudo server called the running loop. This loop is the master coordinator that oversees the suspension and resuming of tasks that are running in our code. In our example, the cook pasta call is a task that will run but will be paused for eight seconds. So when a request comes in and goes to that line, 
the loop suspends that task for eight seconds, making a note of it and goes on to take another incoming request to start from the beginning. When the call to PASTA finishes for the first request, the loop resumes execution on the next line, which would be the scissor shattered line. The run command needs a function to execute, so we pass the waiter function, which is the main function on this code. Run also takes care of the cleanup, so when the whole code is run, it will gracefully disconnect from the loop. These changes are not enough to make our code asynchronous, though. We need to tell Asyncio what functions and what tasks will be run asynchronously. So let's change the waiter function as follows. We declare the waiter as an asynchronous function by prepending it with the async keyword. Once we do that, we are then able to tell Asyncio what asynchronous tasks will happen inside the function by prepending them with the await keyword. So you could read this code as call the cook function and await the result before moving to the next line. But this is not a blocking waiting process. This tells the loop, if you have other requests to tend to, you can do that while we wait. Go ahead and we'll let you know when this is done. Just remember that if you have any await tasks, you need to define that function as async. You might be wondering, what about the cook function? Well, we need to make that asynchronous as well so we could change it to the following. Here's an issue though. If we use the regular time.sleep function, it will block the whole execution, rendering the asynchronous program useless. In this case, we need to use async.io's sleep function instead. Now we're guaranteeing that while the cook function is asleep for those number of seconds, the program can take other incoming requests. Now, if we run the program, we get the following. But wait, there's no difference with the synchronous execution. You were expecting this to run faster, right? Well, that's one of the misconceptions about a synchronous code, that it runs faster. But this program is better already in a way that you can't really tell with this usage. If we were running this program as part of a website, we could be able to serve hundreds or thousands of visitors at the same time on the same server without any timeouts. If we ran the synchronous code instead, we could only serve maybe a dozen of users before the others would start to get timeout errors, since the server's CPU would get overwhelmed. 